brothers and sisters, as we prepare for our morning worship services on this morning, we welcome to the Central Missionary Baptist Church, 3625 Clinton Road, here in Columbia, South Carolina. If you're able to stand, when you stand at this particular time, if you're able to stand, when you stand at this particular time, as we invite the Reverend Freddie Smith to lead us in our morning prayer this morning, as Reverend Smith leads us in our morning prayer, followed by our choral response, and then we will have praise and worship. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with another day's journey. And we are mighty, mighty glad about it. No matter what this future may hold, one thing we can rest with great confidence is that you hold the future. Thank you, God, for assisting us to this better spot. One more time. Thank yes, you, Lord, for letting us wake up one more time. Yeah. Your air one more time. Greet our neighbors one more time in great harmony in all of one accord in this place. We greet you, dear Lord, one more time. Right. Yes, we are glad to be in the service one more time. You didn't have to let us live, but I'm so glad that you did. Right. Help us to be a testimony to your loving Lord, we thank you, Lord, as we assemble in this place. We just want to bless you, Lord, for watching over us all through the week, each and every day. You're never slack in your promises, and you are faithful to uphold everything that you say. God, we just thank you for just wrapping us in your loving arms. Sometimes when we feel like we don't know what's going on, but Lord, we can rest knowing that you know everything. Yes, sir. Lord, help you for checking us with our minds. For your word says you will keep us in perfect peace. Yeah. Whose mind is stayed on thee. So enter in, Holy Spirit. Fly around heavenly dove. And fall fresh on us because we need your anointing. Let your anointing fall from, from the White House to our house. Let, let your anointing fall from, from our job to, to wherever we go in this day. Let your anointing fall and let it make the difference in our life and turn us around to be difference makers so that we can glorify you. We can magnify you. We can lift up holy hands us of our sins. Forgive us of our trespasses. Because, Lord, we want to be right with you and right with one another. We thank you for these and many blessings. In Jesus' name is your servant's prayer.
we're going to make sure we do things to make you feel as safe as possible when you come in the house. And you saw Vernon earlier, when someone goes to a microphone, when they finish your microphone, they go and disinfect the wipes and wipe that microphone down. Amen. And the reason that when I speak up here, I can drop my mess and speak because I'm not sharing the mic with anybody. Amen. As you see, I'm just a lone ranger. I don't have a chair for Tonto up here. There's one chair now. We used to have seven. Amen. So we moved all the chairs out so that we can do those things. And Father, the CDC requirements that have been recommended. Let me thank you for your faithfulness. Let me thank you for your giving and your support. And let me thank you for your prayers. I'm still old fashioned, effective, fervent prayers of the righteous of very much. Let me tell you all why I'm still here today because somebody prayed for me. Somebody had me on their mind. Somebody took the time to call my name in prayer. Amen. We serve a prayer to God. Let us stand. Many of you have been giving using Gelify. Some have been giving using text to give. Some have been using PayPal, other forms of online giving. Many mail baptized and offered in, many drop in along by the church. Whatever matter works for you, we want you to feel comfortable. If you need an offer to an envelope, just raise your hand and I sure will make sure they give one to you. We don't have any in the back of the pew. You see anything that you can touch or hold on to because you can easily transmit things that way. And so I sure will bring it to you so you can fill it out and pass it out with you. Let's pray. God our Father, we thank you for this moment and we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this opportunity to give back to you a portion there which you have blessed us with. We may be all child in some way financially during this pandemic, but we still believe that you are in the supply business. We believe that we're faithful unto your storehouse, that you will bless us like we've never been blessed before. No matter how we are doing, there's someone else to be challenged in a lot of the level that we are. Thank you for the opportunity to be a blessing. There's somebody else. We bring your time. We bring our offer to the storehouse. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And said, I'll just turn and face each other. Wait on the duration of the usher. Wait on the duration of the usher.
to my brothers and sisters so you can read it as your leisure when you're at home. The scripture for today is 7 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, verse 5 to 7. 7 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, verse 5 to 7. Write it down so you can read it when you get at home. And write it down if you didn't bring your Bibles and you thought it was on the screen. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Following the words of record in 2 Corinthians 7, chapter 5 through 7, just three verses. For when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fighting, within were fears. Nevertheless, God, that comforted those that are cast down, Comfort us by the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you, when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. Sermonizing verse is verse 6. Nevertheless, God. Now, God comfort those that are cast down. And he comforted us by the coming of Titus. In other words, God has sent somebody in your way. Has uh, sent somebody in your life that could comfort you. And they may not even have your same last night. I just want to talk today for a little while from the sermon thought that God has not forgotten about you. Amen. Now, can I say it again? I, I need you to hear me loud and clear. No matter where you are, over this sanctuary, that God has not forgotten about you. I know we don't pay dinner. record number of death, a record number of tests. But I need you to take this person today that no matter what your circumstance is, no matter what your situation is, that the God that I serve has a word of hope for you today. That God has not forgotten about you. Come on, give God a hand.
because I have a dear friend by the name of Reverend Anthony Mansfield. Reverend Mansfield, when he would call me, the conversation on the phone would go something like this. You know, when the phone rings, the first thing you do, the first thing you do is you look and see whose name is calling you. Do I have a witness in here? Amen. And when he calls me, I answer the phone and he said, Dr. Ezell? Mm -hmm. My response is Bishop Mansfield. Yeah. His next statement to me is that, how you living? Mm. How you living? In other words, vernacular for how you doing? Right. How are things going? So central on this Sunday morning, I want to address you by asking you how you living. Well, <laughs> well, I got how you living? I mean, how are you really doing? In the midst of everything that's going on around. Sometimes we ask people that the answer is I'm blessed and I'm highly faithful. Sounds real good, but I want to ask you how you live. How you really doing when we take off the mask? Go beyond what's on the outside. How you live? How you really doing? We're living in some unprecedented times. We're facing challenges like we have never faced before. And you got to know, my brothers and sisters, regardless of what you're dealing with, that we serve a God who will comfort us. I need you to take this personal this morning. I don't care how bad things may get. I don't care how tough the struggle, because the struggle is real. I don't care how dark the night may get. I want you to know that God has not forgotten about you. Sometimes when you're going through, you feel like you're all by yourself. It seems like nobody cares, nobody understands. You feel like you're out there on an island all by yourself. I just want to give you words of encouragement on this Sunday. And tag your spirit and say, how are you really living? Mm -hmm. If there was a time in the lives of believers that we need to be assured of the comforting power of God, the time is now. Yes. I want to declare the day as Encouragement Sunday. You know, we've recently experienced a lot, my brothers and sisters. Somebody said, Pastor, I just can't go like I used to. I feel frustrated at home. Being at home ought not to be that bad. <laughs> do do y'all hear me? Being at home ought not to be that bad. Amen, somebody. You can learn to enjoy your home like you never enjoyed your home before. Amen, somebody. You can learn to start quitting and doing things around your house that you haven't done in a while. The other day I found myself in the garage, and that's something I hadn't done in years. Amen. You just take it and make the best of the time and make the best of the situation. Record number of death. They're showing that uh, trucks with, with bodies stuck on top of bodies because they don't have any place to bury them right now. A lot of deaths are being reported all over. And then people are being challenged like they've never been challenged before. You have caregivers who are going, going on attack. Finances with families are being strained. You're trying to do the best you can with what you have. Somebody in here, and I know I wasn't the only one a few years back, and I told you, facing some challenges with internal revenue services. There are three letters that get my attention in the mail. They say IRS. When I get a letter from those folks, everything else is on hold that I saw reading. Amen. I mean, you got people in business in here. You, you know, people want you doing work for them. They, they don't want to pay you for the work you already done. You're smiling on the outside. You're hurting on the inside. You're not by yourself. 
the good news that we serve, we serve a God of comfort. I don't care whether you have a new bed that has sleep noise on it, it cannot comfort you like the Lord can. Do I have a witness in here? I don't care how nice your automobile is, what designer suit you have, what name brand clothing you wear. I've learned that can't nobody do it like Jesus. Do I have a witness? I learned that somebody picked it up best when it's asked the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Let us examine our text on the day. Let's uh, hold you along. Being false accused of wrongdoing is very frustrating and can be very discouraging and depressing. Such was the case with one of the greatest Christians in the history of Christendom, the Apostle Paul. He addresses here the conflicts he faced externally and also internally. He knew what it was like to be depressed and disillusioned, yet he also enjoyed comfort in the face of his discouragement. How did this happen? When Paul was cast down, how did he get back up? We find some answers here. This portion of the scripture will provide some practical answers for us on the ways that the Lord comforts us when we're down in the dumps and how the Spirit should cope with depressing circumstances. Can I tell you a secret today? I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how holy you are. I don't care how much you love the Lord. I don't care whether you dance in advance or you got something to shout about. We all go through something every now and then in our life. Do I have a witness in here? See, God has a way of bringing friends into our lives when we're facing, fighting, facing and fighting with fear. We must make the choice to put the principle of God's word into practice. Obedience, holiness, and godliness are not automatic because we continue to struggle with the flesh. Paul reminded us when I choose to do the right thing, that evil is all around me. The things I ought not be doing, I find myself attracted to doing. The things I should be doing, I'm not doing. If we don't, our brothers and sisters, our sin rob us of our joy. This is why so many Christians have a chip on their shoulder today. They gripe and complain about nothing. They've lost their joy. Let me ask you a question in spite of your trials and troubles. Do you have joy and confidence in the midst of your conflict? So I've learned how to praise him not only in the calm, but I've learned how to praise him in the calm. I've learned not only how to praise him when things are going well, but I've learned how to praise him when things are falling apart. I not only praise him from a friend, but I've been tool enough in the faith that I can thank God for my enemies, because my enemies made me appreciate my friend. My brothers and sisters, the Lord can give you comfort, confidence, calm, and courage when you're facing circumstances that are stressful. In fact, he can take our sorrows and turn them around for his glory. The Lord can take your burdens and turn them into powerful blessings. Paul was a very busy man. When he arrived in Macedonia, there was little time for rest or relaxation. In fact, he was surrounded by trouble, which is from the Greek word, which means to press hard or compress, be cramped into a narrow place, to be afflicted, trouble or distress. This was created by fighting strife and contention from outward opposition. Meanwhile, emotionally, he was facing fear, dread, or terror. Can you relate to what he faced? Have you ever been in this boat? Satan had lunch and all out attack against God's man. He was endeavoring to smother the apostle with stress, strange sorrow, and scary circumstances. God was aware of what was happening and sent his man a breath of fresh air. Notice verse number six. Verse number six reminds us of the goodness of the Lord. First of all, today I want to talk about the past comfort that God has not forgotten about you. Verse six opened by saying, nevertheless, a God of comfort. We're talking about past comfort. God is a God of comfort. You would think the way most people live that God would be a God of discomfort, but God's grace prevails and our text speaks of his comfort. Nevertheless, say God can comfort at all times. The Lord comfort those who are cast down. This word comfort is from the Greek word parakaleo, which means to call to one side, to speak to, to encourage, to strengthen, to instruct, and to comfort. The arrival of Titus of an encouraging friend. The apostle stated this dilemma. 
But that's a big word when it says nevertheless. This is a great word. It is from the word Allah, which means to form a transition to the cardinal, a vital matter at hand. Paul said we may have had some problems, but God comfort those that are cast down. Paul's focus was on the Lord, not on his problem. Can I say that one more time? Paul's focus was on the Lord, not on his problem. Sometimes we focus so much on our problem that we forget about the God that we serve. This message was received. This is what we're able to do. Hebrews 12, 2 and 8 said, Well, we look at the Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is not limited by season of circumstances. Our text refers to his comfort and work in the past, or evidence of his comfort and work in the future. But I have a witness in here. During many hospital visitations over my 23 years in ministry, all individual want is a little comfort. I read to them from the Bible for comfort. No one has ever asked me to read the newspaper or read the magazine, but them give them comfort based on the word of God. Do I have a witness in here? The prophet Isaiah was ordered to comfort ye, my people. How did he do it? By telling them about Jesus, God's word, and God's son. Can bring comfort in the midst of the darkest hour. So first of all, I want to remind you about God's past comfort. God has not forgotten about you. All you have to do is to look back over your life and see some circumstances and situations you've been in and see how the Lord has brought you out. Uh, if God did it in the past, uh, God can surely do it in the future. Do I have a witness in hell? I've learned that all I have to do is to have a good memory and think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. Uh, my soul cries, hallelujah. I want to thank the Lord for saving me. Do I have anybody here that's grateful for what the Lord has already done? Do I have anybody here who's thankful for the Lord has already brought you from? Do I have anybody in here who's just so mad when you look over your life? You say we come this far by faith, just a lady and depending on the Lord. Well, I wish I had somebody here early this Sunday morning that's been through some stuff in your life where you could have lost your mind, but the Lord stepped in. He stepped in right on time. Because not only is the God of right now, but he's the God of the past. He's the God of comfort. If he did it back then, he can do it again. God has not forgotten about you. But look at his past comfort. Secondly, God has not forgotten about you, but look at the people that he comforted. Right, says, verse six said, those that are cast down. The word cast down means those in depressing and humbling circumstances and anxious situations. If you're going through something right now and you're under attack, I want you to know that God is going to provide comfort for you. Do I have a witness in here? If you feel like you're at the end of your rope and you can't go no far and you're throwing your hands up on that situation, God said, I was waiting on you to take your hands off me. Mm. So I can step right in on time and take over. Because he's a God of comfort. Sometimes we go through so much stuff and we wonder why me? Can I ask you a question? Why not you? Why not me? If Jesus had to go through, then you and I are not exempt from going through. Because I read nowhere in the Bible where my name and your name opened up in a blind eye. I read nowhere in the Bible where my name or your name raised anybody from the dead. I read nowhere in the Bible where my name and your name caused any lame folks to get up off the bed and start walking. Do I have a witness in here? We got to realize no matter what our situation is, that you are not alone. That God has not forgotten about you. 
I know you're not anxious right now because the word is out that they may not extend the unemployment any farther. If they do, they may not add the extra $600 and you will get three before. They add the six that gave you nine and you got some back money coming in and you wonder how you're going to make it without it. The same God. Thank God. Thank you. Do I have a witness in here? The same God that provided for you before will provide for you right now. And see, it's been so long since you got your stimulus check, you don't even know where it went. Do I have a witness in here? You trying to figure where the stimulus check went. All you know, it came, then it left. Right. Amen, somebody. Right. But I want you to know God is with you every step of the way. Paul, in a few verses before our text, describes the situation of being cast down. Without, we're fighting. Within were fears. We might say we are between a brick wall and a hard place. God comforts those who need comfort. How much better to let God do the comforting than circumstances or drugs or alcohol or mankind, which can often make our situation worse and only dig the hole deeper to be cast down in. Look to the Lord for help. Seek him in the word of God and in prayer and worship. There you indeed find comfort, encouragement, and help in your cast down situation. You won't find much comfort or less than comfort in some type of entertainment, some type of sporting event. You will find comfort in the Lord. The text says that, that God comforts those that are cast down. This word has the idea of being discouraged or depressed. If you're cast down, if you've been discouraged, if you've been depressed, if you don't know how you're going to make it, if you don't know how you're going to come out of it, God told me to tell you I'm right there with you. Do Christians get depressed? You bet they do. In fact, some of the most well-known Christians throughout history face times of depression. See, Satan has a goal. It is to get God's people so discouraged and so depressed that Satan can whisper in the heart of a lost sinner and say, now look, is this what a Christian looked like? Do you want to look like that? Satan is on the wall, pain. He wants to get you this prayer. He wants to get husband and their wives fighting against each other, talking at each other rather than talking to each other. He wants to get parents turning on children and children turning on parents. His desire is to cause confusion within their home. That's right. That's right. 2 Corinthians 4 and remind us. We're troubled on every side, yet we are not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We're cast down, but not destroyed, because the Lord is on our side. Charles Spurgeon suffered black periods, no depression of anguish and depression. Do I have a witness in here? Ah, uh, Justin, the first foreign missionary from America suffered from deep depression after the death of his wife, Nancy. He said, God is to me a great unknown. William Cowper, the author of the song, There's a Fountain Filled with Blood, suffered from severe depression all of his life. In fact, he spent 18 months in an insane asylum, tried several times to take his own life. Martin Luther was the subject to such fits of darkness that he would hide himself away for days. His family would remove all dangerous implements from the house for fear him he would harm himself. In the midst of one of these times, his wife Katharina entered his room. She was dressed in mourning clothes. Starter Luther looked and asked her, who had died? She replied that no one had, but the way he was asking, she thought that God had died because he seemed to have no joy in his life. So these Christians of past suffered and went through things but in spite of it, they knew that they had a God of comfort. Amen. Now, as I press toward the close, I want to remind you that not only was God a, a past comforter, not only did God comfort the people, but do I have a witness in here that not God was a present comfort? That's good news right there. Do I, do I have anybody that's prayer with me right now? That's good news, my brothers and my sisters. To remind you that not only did God provide comfort in the past, but not only did God provide comfort for the people, 
but God provides comfort for us in the midst of our present time and our present situation. Do I have a witness in here that God has not forgotten about you? The Apostle Paul would test to the present work of God by telling the church at Corinth that God brought comfort to him, namely by sending times. God can so work providence that it will comfort us even in our darkest hour. See, Titus came to Paul with some good news. God always has a time ready for us with good news for our catch down situation. Look for your time and stuff. God knows just when to send. You surely can identify with the cast down until today. Maybe you're in a nevertheless situation. These sort of situations God especially like. For in them he can show his power by bringing comfort to you because of your dire situation. The arrival of Titus was not only relief, but also a shot in the arm for Paul. He did not feel out on feel out on the limb anymore. Beloved, God uses people to lift us when we are down. See, David, I wish I had a prayer at church. See, David had his Jonathan. Elijah had his Elijah. Moses had Joshua. Paul had Silas. Abundance will have Timothy. And the list can go on now. But I'm glad, my brothers and sisters, that the Lord has not forgotten about me. Uh, do I have a witness in here? And somebody here needs to be reminded today uh, that the Lord has not forgotten about you. Uh, the Lord has not brought you this far in order to leave you. Uh, other folks may forget about you. Uh, other folks may stop calling you. Uh, other folks may stop texting you. Uh, you may not get emails from folks anymore. Uh, but I stop by to tell you, God uh, is still on your side. Uh, and because God uh, is still on my side, uh, I got a feeling uh, that everything uh, is going to be all right. Uh, I don't know how you feel, uh, but I'm so glad today uh, that I serve. I uh, nevertheless, God, uh, is there anybody here that knows that you serve? Nevertheless, God, uh, well, I wish I had some prayer warriors uh, on my side. Uh, if it had not uh, been for the Lord uh, on my side, uh, somebody tell me uh, where would I be? Uh, do I have a witness in here? Has the Lord been good to anybody? Has the Lord blessed anybody? Has the Lord made a way for anybody? Has the Lord opened a door for anybody? Has the Lord delivered anybody? Has the Lord made a way for anybody? Has the Lord made your enemies behave? I wish I had a few praises in here. You know we serve a God of comfort. Somebody shall nevertheless. And Luke 5, 4 through 5, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Lunch out in the deep and let down your nets for drought. And Simon said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and we've caught nothing. But nevertheless, uh, at thy word, uh, I will let down my net. Uh, we serve a nevertheless God. Uh, his grace is still sufficient. Uh, his strength is still made perfect in the midst of my weakness. Uh, Nevertheless, I'm so glad uh, that God has not forgotten about me. There have been times in my life uh, I've fallen short. Uh, I've let God down. Uh, but there's never a time uh, that God has let me down. But when I was down, uh, the Lord picked me up. Uh, even if he had to reach uh, way down. Uh, do I have a witness in here? I'm glad. Keep on praying, he'll hear your cry. If you keep on praying, 
your present situation, hear me. God is going to buy comfort to you no matter where you are. No matter what you need, God's got it. He's got everything that you need. Amen. Let us stand together. God has not forgotten about you. You're going to be all right. Tighten the belts up a little bit. Cut back on your spinning song. There's a word that's African American. We need to embrace It's called F S A D E. Save. Save you some money. Do y'all hear me? Save you some money. Don't go out and make no major purchase on stuff right now. You don't know how the next few months are going to look like. You got to save you some money. Mama used to say, put some aside for a rainy day. You better put some aside because you don't know what the day going to look like two to three months from now. Amen. I'm helping your brothers out when you get home and get wild on about seven news. And pastor said, we ain't got about nothing. When they can get you to turn around to you, and pastor don't live in this house. <laughs> That's why I give you wisdom that save some stuff. Be cautious with what you do on decisions that you make. This ain't no time that you not be no big ball and trying to let everybody in your family. You know, family don't get loans, they get gifts. Loans you pay back, they get gifts. Y'all do know that, don't you? So stop getting mad when they don't pay them back. They family, they're gonna pay you back. Just, just give it to them and, and move on down the road. That may be someone today. Upon the sign of my Lord's going to step out from where you are. Give the pastor your hand and give God your heart. That may be someone that's about the internet, that want to be a part of our church family. We welcome you now to call in at 803 252 Those who are with us here, if you want to step out and come down now, today we will receive you. The door of the church is open. Have us continue to practice social distancing. 
Help us to continue to wear masks. Help us to continue to wash our hands continually. And help us, God, to stay in your word. Because when we do all of these things, we still need to rely on your word. For we realize that heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God will stand forever. We pray for all sick and shut in. We pray for all bereaved families. We pray for those who experience death within their family. So the Bible, I hate when I'm fine. No Bible, we're lifting you up in prayer. And we continue to lift your family in prayer. Father God, we serve and do any and everything but faith. And he has now brought us his fault in order to leave us. We hold faith fast to your words, sir. When it earth the house of this town, that it is all. But our loved one has another building now. Not made by man, but eternal by God in heaven. Thank you for moving out of the old house and moving into the new house. We thank you for who you are. Now as we prepare to depart this place, but never from your presence, have us to look to you to unify us. Have us to look to you to keep us in your divine providence. You can. We cast all our cares upon you, because you carry much for us. Now may the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. His now forevermore in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Consider yourself dismissed. Join our Sunday school.